Hello everybody, in today's video we are talking about how to find the sharpest settings for each particular lens that you may own. This is something that's really important to do because you always want to produce the sharpest photos, of course. Now if you're just looking at your photos on Instagram, it's probably not going to make much of a difference, but when you go to print things, you do want those photos to be looking as sharp as possible, and it's really nice to be able to get that really nice sharp photo in the field uh, before you post process so that you can further enhance it in post processing because there's a certain amount of sharpness that if you don't get it in the field you will not be able to reproduce it in post-processing so I want to talk to you guys about how I find the sharpest settings for each one of my lenses and this is usually the aperture this is the setting that is going to affect the sharpness now most lenses uh, three or four clicks off of the bottom or most wide open aperture is going to be the sharpest but I highly recommend you do this quick little test to figure out what the best aperture is for your lens I'm going to show you guys the images that I'm working with and I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do this test so you can see here that we're in Lightroom and I've got two sets of photos this uh stack here I shot with my telephoto lens on my tripod and the other stack here I shot with my drone so I wanted to test uh, what the best settings are for both of those so let's look at the telephoto stack first so you can see that if I click on these images all of these images are essentially taken of the same thing of course the trees slightly moving because of the wind um, but they are taken of the same thing now what I'm testing here is what the sharpest aperture is if you look on the right side you will see that this one is at an aperture of f16, uh, this one's 5.6, this one's 6.3, 7.1, 8, 9.0, and 11. So I've got all of these different photos here, and I essentially just want to figure out which one is the sharpest. Let's move this one all the way to the back because that first one was f16. So now they are all in order. So the way that you do this test is when you go out to take these photos is you want every exposure to be the same lightness value or the same exposure value. So the way that you do that is to go out there, properly expose the scene for one image, start at your most wide open aperture, let's say f2.8, and maybe you'll find that 1 30th is the proper shutter speed to properly expose that. So then what you can do is to simply, every time you click the shutter speed one, you're gonna click the aperture one in the opposite direction to balance the exposure and essentially keep it the same. So you'll see that's essentially what I did here. You can see that we were at 125th of a second, F16. And then as I went down to F11, I went to 1 250th. Um, and so on and so forth. So you just want to balance the exposure. And when I flip through these images, you'll see that they are each pretty much the same lightness value here. So now I want to compare obviously and see which one of these is going to be better and more sharp. So let's look at the most stark difference first and we'll look at F5.6 compared to F16. Now when I'm in Lightroom, I can command click or control click on a PC um, and I'm gonna hit C. Now when you hit C, it will bring up your select and your candidate. So the select is the image that you're selecting, obviously. You can see that one's 5.6, and the candidate over here is F16. When I click on that, I can see the settings. So what I wanna do here is actually zoom in. Maybe not that far. Um, so you can click and zoom in, or you can just hit Command Plus or Control Plus on a PC. Essentially, I just wanna zoom in far enough to get a good look at things. Now. So essentially, what is sharpness? So sharpness is contrast, essentially, uh, boiled down to it. It's just uh, micro contrast. So we're looking for the image with the most contrast. Obviously, I haven't edited these images. They are just raw files straight out of the camera. So we're looking for the most contrast. Now, when I look at these images, it's kind of obvious to tell that this image on the left has way more contrast than the one on the right. Look at the contrast around these leaves here uh, that's not really present here, as well as on this tree branch. There's quite a bit of darkness on the tree branch that you don't see on the right side. So in that case, I know that this image on the left, the F5.6, is way sharper than the F11. So we know that this is not going to be our sharpest aperture here. So I'm I'm just going to go ahead and hit the flag here and go back here. Now you can see it's got an X on it, so I know it's not the sharpest. So uh, I just hit escape, by the way, to go back to the grid view here from the compare view. Now I want to compare this 5.6 with this F11 now. And again, I'm going to hit C to compare. And we're already zoomed in. 
and you can see that it's loading. This one on the right now is the F5.6. This one on the left is the F11. It is taking a little while to load. Uh, those Sony A7R4 files are absolutely ginormous. And there it is. You can see now it's loaded and it's looking pretty close here. But the one thing that you'll see if I zoom in a couple more times is look at how much more contrast is around this dark spot. See how it's a little bit darker right here than over here? So that would tell me that this uh, exposure right here, this F5.6 is still better than this one on the left, the F11. So I'm gonna hit X on that and put a flag on it. Now you guys may be looking at this thinking that I am really, really nitpicking, but let me tell you guys, um, for those times where your settings don't really matter, you just need to dial the exposure to be correct, you might as well do it uh, the absolute sharpest that you can. It's gonna make it easier to edit your image. It's gonna look better when you print. So it is important to nitpick on your photos and figure out exactly what the best aperture is for your sharpness. So let's keep looking here. Uh, let's compare the F9 with the F5.6. I'm going to select both of these. I'm gonna hit C and we will let that load out. Now the one on the left is F5.6. So it's important and it's really easy to, to see uh, if you bring open this right side tab. If it's uh, not there, you can click this to make it permanent. And then you can see the settings here. And when I click on the right, you can see now I'm selecting the candidate F9. I'm selecting the select F5.6. So once again, we're looking really close. You can see that they're really, really close here, and they're both actually looking pretty good. Um, but I think on this one, I might go with the F9 image. And just as I click around and look, I'm particularly looking, look right here. See how much more contrast there is in the tree here than there is over here? So it's really, really slight and subtle, but it does make a difference. I'm going to go with the F9 being sharper. I'm going to hit Escape to go back out, and I'm going to put a flag by hitting X on the 5.6 image. So now I've got F6.3, 7.1, 8.0, and 9.0 to figure out which one is the sharpest. Now I'm gonna go in and select the 9.0 and the 6.3, and we're gonna let that load out. Now one thing that you're gonna notice is the higher quality lens you have, the less difference you're gonna see. So this lens that I'm shooting with here is the 70 to 300 on Sony. It's a pretty high quality lens, uh, about $1,000. So you wouldn't expect to see drastically different results on these apertures that are around six, seven, eight, nine. Um, however, if you're using a cheaper lens, maybe something on the two to $300 range, um, you would definitely expect to see a larger difference here. So it'd be even more important that you do this. But because I'm using um, a really nice lens already, you're not seeing a huge difference here. Okay, so I am going to look around here. The one on the left is 6.3. The one on the right is 9.0. And I'm looking particularly at this spot right here. Maybe you come up here a little bit. You can see it's really, really close here. There's not much of a difference that we are seeing here. And I'm gonna say this image on the left, the 6.3 is better. So let's go and we'll X out uh, the F9 and let's look at eight and 6.3. We've got eight on the left, 6.3 on the right. We'll let that load out. Now, what I'm finding here is that between 6.3 and 9, the images are really, really, really similar. So I might just uh, be happy saying that, you know, maybe anywhere between F6.3 and F9 is my ideal spot to be. I can dial it into anywhere in between there, and you're going to have really, really similar results and just be happy with that. On this one, I think I'm liking the 6.3 once again. I'm looking at the contrast right here in the bark of this tree as opposed to this tree, not as much contrast. We're gonna go with 6.3. And the last comparison here, we've got 6.3 and 7.1. The difference is going to be essentially nothing. It's gonna be super, super minimal here, um, but we'll bring it up just to take a look and we will let you guys decide for yourself. Um, you can zoom in here. You can see the difference is very minimal. I do like this one on the right a little bit, the 6.3. So with that, I would probably hit escape here. 
I would X this 7.1 and leave this 6.3. So you can see that simple test. Now I know that 6.3 is the best aperture for that lens in particular. Now it's important to note that there's other factors that can affect this. For example, if you're shooting at a really slow shutter speed and it's windy, you might see blur from the trees moving, but it's important to distinguish that from the lens not being sharp. Um, so you need to make sure you use a fast enough shutter speed that there's no motion blur in your image. So let's go ahead and look at my drone shots here. Um, these ones are not quite as sharp because the drone camera is definitely not as nice as the camera on the ground. So we've got a few different shots here. I took one at f2.8, one at f4, one at f3.2. Let's reorganize that there. Uh, one at f7.1, f9, and f11. Now I'm going to come in here and we're going to browse through these images. The reason you can see that they're slightly moving. I took it with a drone, so a little bit of wind um, can kind of mess up your shot here um, just by moving it a little bit, but it's okay. We'll still be able to tell. And the other thing that I wanted to show you guys is on these particular images, I want to zoom out here. I actually had to change the exposure. So the exposure originally for this image was like this, um, which you can see doesn't quite match the rest of the images. And I totally messed this up. I don't really know how, um, but if you, if this does happen to you, it's totally okay. All that you need to do is go back and forth and you want to match the darker image. All you need to do is hit the exposure a couple times and you can see that's still not enough. I'm flipping back and forth with my arrow keys and now I'm flipping and you can see it is matched. So if for some reason your exposure is off, it's important to dial it back down to make sure all the images have the same exposure. Um, and you can easily do that just by going to the develop module and hitting the exposure a few times with the arrow keys. All right, so we're gonna go back to library here and I'm going to go to the grid view. And now let's compare the two furthest away from each other first. We're gonna compare F2.8 to F11. We're gonna hit C. And we are going to hit command plus to zoom in. You can really zoom in to just about any spot here. This image on the left is the select, which is F11. The image on the right is the candidate, which is F2.8. And you can already tell on this lower end uh, drone camera lens. I mean, it's a high end drone camera, but drone cameras are nowhere near the capabilities of on the ground cameras. Um, you can see how much contrast difference there is here in this tree. So this is in focus, but uh, it's not very sharp. Whereas over here, it's quite a bit sharper. So. We know that the F11 is definitely not gonna be our sharpest. Let's go down to F9 and compare that to F2.8. And I'm gonna keep looking at this tree again. There's other spots that I could potentially look at like this tree, um, which this is actually a really good comparison here. But it's looking like up here, maybe this F9 is gonna be sharper than this F2.8. But let's scroll back and make double check with this tree here. Yes, yeah, so you can see that this tree might be sharper on this 2.8. Now the reason that might be is because on a lot of these drone cameras, there's pretty bad lens distortion and sharpness issues on the edge, which is why when I look at this tree, it doesn't look too good at 2.8. So it's better to look somewhere in the middle of the scene. But I'm gonna go with the F9. So we're gonna get rid of this F2 here. Let's compare F3.2 to the F9. Essentially, you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to use the process of elimination to figure out exactly which image is the sharpest to decide which aperture I should be using in the future when my aperture doesn't really matter and I can use a variable aperture. So in this image, I'm really liking this F9. Once again, you can see the contrast right here as opposed to right here. Let's just scroll and look around and yeah, I'm liking this F9. So let's get rid of that. So we'll compare F4 now to this. Um, oops. And we, if you accidentally hit the flag, you can just hit U to unflag or remove the flag. And we'll hit C again to compare. Um, and on the left side, we've got F9. On the right side, we've got F4. And it's gonna be pretty close here, I think. Let's look at these trees in here. I'm still liking the F9, I think. And in particular, I'm looking right here at this tree is the same as this tree here. 
So we're gonna go with the F9. And lastly, we will compare the F9 to the F7.1. And that will tell us what the ideal aperture is for the drone. So you can see once again here, it's kind of a toss up. Um, I'm still kind of liking this F9 a little bit. This kind of tree right here looks a little bit better than it does over here, but it's really a toss up here. It's super close. So I'd be pretty comfortable anywhere in the F6.3 to F9 range on this drone as well. And so that's pretty much how I do the sharpness test here. It's super simple and easy. Um, there's really no reason that you can't do this with your lenses. And one thing to keep note is to use manual focus and only focus once. Don't refocus between each shot because that can give you issues when there's a little bit of change in focus that can greatly change the sharpness. So go out there, get a tripod, use your drone, whatever, figure out your exact best sharpness for each lens that you own. You could even put this on the lens cap, put a little sticky note or like a little label or something just saying that this is the sharpest aperture. Because I know if you guys are out there shooting a lot of landscapes, there's so many times where the aperture simply doesn't matter. You can dial your settings into whatever you want. Nothing in the scene is moving. Um, the shutter speed can be as slow as you want. The ISO can be whatever you want. So you can adjust the aperture to the sharpest aperture to get the absolute best image in the field. This is really important. It's really nice to do because a lot of this sharpening will be hard to get back when you're at home. I really hope this video was helpful for you guys. If you guys have any questions about my process, go ahead and put it down in the comments below. And as always, please make sure to like and subscribe. It helps me keep creating these videos for free for you guys. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.